how do you deal when Hannah hates Kate and they will not work together in your PTO? And they're just like maybe sniping at each other privately. Maybe it has spilled over into a meeting. In any situation, it is uncomfortable, especially if they are board members. So you're supposed to be working together to get things done. That is what Karen and I are going to talk to you about today. So Karen, have you ever had a Holly and a Kate in your group kind of situation? And what'd you do about it? You know, um, I think we have, but it's been more on like a behind the scenes kind of thing. Um, Probably, and I'll be honest, thinking back, it's probably been because more of the COVID situation and we weren't person to person. Um, mm-hmm. So it was kind of easier to hide those conflicts when it was with a Zoom, right? So the side texting and then what's being said publicly kind of kept some of that fray from happening in public. But yeah, I mean, people come to these positions as volunteers for a variety of reasons and every personality in your school should be and will probably be reflected on your board and nobody has the same mission thoughts about where your money should go or whatnot and so i think as a group the more you can rely on a strong set of bylaws and standing rules just to make sure that the absolute peace is kept and then relying on your personal interactions that's like your relationships you build one-on-one as a leader with other people to kind of people move, you know what I mean? Like everybody just wants to be heard, wants to feel valued, that their time is well spent. And I think if you can take a step back and realize where their motivation is between that, sometimes you can help stem some of those interpersonal like, but sometimes there's a Sally and a Sue that are just not gonna do. And you've got to figure out a way to like, maybe you should be working behind the scenes in your front of the house kind of a thing. And so segregating and separating sometimes when you know that there's, there's a trouble spot, that can help as well. Yeah. So have you actually had to facilitate like that discussion or I'm assuming you didn't bring everybody together for a powwow, but you may have discussed in um, privately with them. Yeah. Or, or maybe even like taking a vote, like, okay, I see that both of you are very passionate about two different, you know, options, but they're options and, you know, we're kind of a democracy here. So let's, let's put it out anonymously let's just make a decision and we're all gonna charge forward and know we're doing it for the kids and trying to bring them back to that mission sometimes you're like oh yeah okay okay you know it's it's not about selling your your favorite t-shirt design it's about making sure that the kids have something to wear that's super fun and shows school spirit right so that's I think that's how I've dealt with it is more of like the bureaucracy trying to take myself out of it and that's why I mentioned like the standing rules the bylaws Mm -hmm. like Let's take the the personal aspect a little bit out of it and go back to more of a business-like discussion for some of those things that really get heated. Sure. So I think it's interesting. Do your bylaws like outline how to do an anonymous vote? No. Nope. Like where, I guess you're <laughs> writing it down. You guys, you've just employed that. That's smart, I think. Yeah, I think it's just more of like on the board basis. Like, okay, let's let's table this. Okay. Think about it. The next time we get together, we don't have to make a discussion or, you know what, we're going to do a a text. Text me your thoughts. We'll put together something. The next board meeting, we'll make the decision. Sometimes that separation of time, too, in something that where there's drama being caused because people get caught up in the moment. They have their their passion for a project or how we're going to spend money, et cetera. And sometimes you just need a little step back and a little break to to temper that. Yeah, we've never done... I guess the only time that we've done anonymous voting is for when we were electing officers. And there was one situation where it was the PTA council, actually. And so there was the election of officers. And there were kind of two camps of of women who wanted to get involved. And I'm not, like, I wasn't, I was in the middle of it and going, wait, what is going on? Because people were like, wanting to make statements about why they should be elected in the meeting. And it just felt very icky. And I remember sitting there wanting to stop it because, so I had agreed to be president. Like I was the um, slated incoming president and I had called in favors to fill the board for like, for the council. And it wasn't like I was packing it with all my cronies. These were open positions that people were really not that interested in filling. And so I thought, who, who could I work with? Well, they Mm -hmm. were by no means my BFFs, but just people that I 
that I knew and had a rapport with. And then I thought, oh, this is my time to call in a favor. <laughs> so <laughs> you know, sometimes you bit. need to do that. It's like we've yeah. talked about PTA is just based on relationships. And so sometimes you need to call, call that in and be like, Hey, Betty, I need you here. I'm trying not to use people's real names. <laughs> so her name was not Betty, but anyway, we'll just go with Betty. I had um, asked Betty if she would be interested in being the uh, VP. Um, I think my first, first VP, which was like in a, the job description was supporting the president. Like that was the main job is like a, you know, left hand or right hand man, sort of <laughs> right hand woman kind of thing. And not, not exactly defined, but mostly. And so someone else who, uh, some people had given me the heads up. I had never met her, but they're like, she is super difficult to work with. And she just, she has strong feelings and opinions and it's kind of her way or the highway. And I thought, well, I don't want to work with that kind of person. Cause even though I do have strong feelings, I, it's not all the Christina show. It is Christina comes up with the, the ideas. Do you like my ideas? Yes. No, we can go. You're not going to hurt my feelings. If you say no, this is just my, you know, what I came up with to solve this one problem. And we were sitting there in the meeting. It was, well, it was April because we were voting and people were like, well, I think we should make a statement of why this person deserves the job. And Betty, my friend was she's kind of an introvert and she's not one to advocate for herself. And I didn't know exactly what to say. And the other person had someone speaking up for her and it was really uncomfortable. But then someone else spoke up for Betty and said, she really has a good heart and is a hard worker. And they didn't say plays nicely with others, but that was kind of coded. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so in the end, it's important. Betty was elected. Barb was not. All was well. So I got to work with my buddy, called that favor in successfully, and didn't have to work with Barb, who was not easy to work with at all. But it was, uh, people were mad. It's just like, well, I don't understand what you're mad about. There's so, room I guess, for all the volunteers. You know, I think people get caught yeah. up in specific roles and you're like, wait, this doesn't mean you can't be somewhere else. Like, It's a power thing, I think. Yeah. And it's just, it, that is what I don't understand. Cause it's like, you have nothing else going on in your life where like, this is what matters. Like, this is what matters. And it, it does matter, but not to that extent. I don't think it's like people lose that perspective of, I don't know. We're both currently presidents of our yeah. groups right now. I don't let it get to my head. I personally, I, I love it. Like I don't need to be in the spotlight, but I enjoy it. I'll be <laughs> honest. I'm a Leo. So it's like, you give me a microphone, I'm going to ham it up a little bit, but it's like, I am okay stepping to the side and, and supporting and helping to steer that light onto my friend or even not my friend, just a volunteer who consistently, you know, shows up, does the work, tries, like I have no problem shining the sh spotlight on them. It's just the people who can't share the spotlight that, that bugs me. So yeah. that is, because I think there's room enough for all and there's time enough for all. So. So I have yeah. another question. We've talked a little yeah. bit about like person to person drama, but have you ever dealt with like um, parent towards school drama? It's the season. It's, it's budget things. I know in our school in particular, there's a lot of, you know, there's hard decisions that are being made. And have you helped like as a PTA president or as a leader, help make sure that voices of concern from parents go toward, you know, school leadership? Or how have you dealt with any of those types of drama issues? Not real recently. Um, I, cause I'm real clear on boundaries and I am clear about what hat I have on. So and I will always be like, that's not the PTA's job. Like, I understand your frustration. Like, the at no time has our PTA meeting ever become overrun with disgruntled parents about something going on at the school. Like, never. And because we are clear about it, I'm trying to think. I think that's really sage advice because our school is built that there's a PTA and we also have, like, an internal school board. And those are different parent representatives. Mm -hmm. And I think it's really very helpful. Like we don't, the PTA president is not deciding on which teacher gets hired or whatnot. That's not our role. And I think 
right. making sure parents understand that there's different avenues. Like, yeah. If you are interested in, you know, bringing a fun reading program to an after school activity, that's PTA. If you want to change the curriculum of the reading books, that's the school board. And so mm -hmm. trying to exactly wear that hat and, and reiterate to parents, I think that has helped dissolve some of that, especially for a PTA meeting where you don't want it to become a gripe situation. Yeah. Because we don't have yeah, we have that 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 is good. We have um, a longtime member who's actually also a school board member. And we don't have the same setup that you have with like the the internal school board, I'm saying for the whole district. So she has been excellent at over the years. I'll say to her, um, I have to come up with another name because I don't want to use her real name. Stacy, uh, Stacy, put on your school board hat for a little bit. I need to talk to you about that. And I said, okay, take that off. PTA hat now. <laughs> or friend hat now. <laughs> so just really good. I'll be like, and she'll be responding and she'll say school board hat. Okay. And then she says her ditty and it's like, okay, Stacy, I see you. <laughs> so, I think it's healthy to have yeah. that kind of disclosure. And so, you know, where you're coming from. And I've also done that when, like, I guess I haven't had it from a parent, but one time I had a teacher come at me. It was the, there was a really not healthy discussion about a contract negotiation, like a renewal. Mm -hmm. And we're talking about going on strike and a strike. And I had this teacher just kind of catch me in the hallway and I was not present at the time, but uh, I don't want to say I'm an elevated figure, but people know who I am because I've been so right. involved and I am not quiet. And mm -hmm. um, so uh, she stopped me. She's like, you guys need to help us. And I was like, yeah, I think we can't do, I go, I'm going to have to. Yes. That is, <laughs> that is exactly what I said to her. I yeah. said, teacher, I will advocate for you with my parent hat on, but I have to keep our, the group out of it because we have to work with everybody. Right. And so I hear you. I agree with you. That is, you know, that is they're being unreasonable. It was a point where like they needed, I think they actually did have to get a mediator to come in and get everybody slightly on the same page because they were all like, Oh, they hate us. And they're doing this out of spite. And they hate us because they're doing this out of spite. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, you guys are children. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Not my mom. It's not my circus. Please, please, please. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. So I said, teacher, yeah. I have my parent hat on right now. So sorry, I can't help you. <laughs> or I can't, I can't have the group help you. I said, I'm just right. going to be wearing my hat with you. So yeah, that's really good. I think it's, it's hard because you want the situation to get resolved, but you don't want to get into the fray of things. Yeah. So I, a lot of times people will reach out, people will reach out to me privately, which I totally don't mind um, because they have a special situation. They, they want to know how to handle it. And it's usually like, is like Sally and Stacy are butting heads. What do I do? So the best is I think to address it individually and privately and see if you can find a way to get them both kind of on the same page, even if they might not understand that. <laughs> yeah. It's and like dealing with your kids, and, right? Yeah, exactly. Use their times and talents where they're best situated and, you know, give them their own little kingdom and make sure that, you know, everybody feels valued in what they're bringing to the table, but try and mitigate as much of that, you know, ick as you can. It's always yeah. The, yeah. The ick. <laughs> ick is no good. No, no ick. No exam. It's no good. No good. All right, guys. Did you have any other closing thoughts on this, Karen? No, I think it just goes back to, you know, your relationships and, and realize at the end of the day that you're all there to help the kids, to make good choices for your school and try not to take things personally and just bring what you can to the table to help, you know, ease those tensions as quickly as possible and move on to something more fun. And yeah. Yeah, I think that's great. I always tell people like, is this going to matter in 10 years? Is this what you want to get into? Will this even matter in 10 months? You know, if, it, if the answer is no, then lay down your sword, my friend. <laughs> yep. Let's stop with the sass and get on with the fun. So, exactly. all right. Well, this has been a fun conversation for sure. And I so hope that you all watching have enjoyed this one and you will join us for the next video. Want even more guidance on how to be a stronger leader so you can run a better PTO or PTA? All these resources and more are waiting for you at ptoanswers.com.